Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. The United Stand chart show is back where we count down the top 10 players of the week. It's the final countdown. Well, it's not the final countdown. It's the first countdown. We're back with the chart show. And as I said, there's some big, big hitters not in the top 10 this week, which you're going to find out. Last time we did the chart show was probably at the end of last season. Anthony Martial was number one. Will he be number one this week? Well, he's not number one zero. He's not number 10. That's Scott McTominay. Well, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who'd walk 500 miles to be found at your door. A Scottish classic and the Proclaimers. Scott McTominay in at number 10 this week. Look, you know what? I still haven't made my mind up about McTominay. I'm not going to pretend that I have. But he played against Newcastle. He played against PSG. I think that yellow card that he got in the first half against PSG, I was panicking. I was panicking at half-time, and many of you were as well. But the discipline of his second-half performance showed a maturity beyond his years. And I really hope, like I do with any of our youth players that come through, that they go on and have great futures at United. There's a lot of faith in McTominay. There's a lot of drive. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of dedication. And look, I, if McTominay can keep Matic out of the team, he ain't doing something wrong, is he? So a big week for Scott, and I think he did really well. And I hope, I hope that he can keep building on that. So Scott McTominay is the number 10 for this week. Number 9 this week is... I tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. You see what I did there? Matter, matter. One matter, number nine this week. I mean, look, he's done really well to get in the top ten this week because he didn't play against PSG. Eleven people did. So for matter to get in is super, super fast, super fantastic matter. But um, no, he was very good against Newcastle. I think he was many people's uh, man of the match. And, uh, you know, this is uh, football at the highest level. This is what it is. This is what it is. It was a tactical selection on Tuesday night against PSG that kept Juan Mata out. Juan Mata should not have started. All these people who go, I can't believe Mata's not starting. He deserves to start because he played well against Newcastle. We couldn't play the same way against PSG that we did against Newcastle. We would have got beat. We had to do what we did. That meant that Mata couldn't play. Whether he plays against Chelsea or not, I don't know. But look, he'd have been a lot higher if he had played against PSG and played as well as he did against Newcastle. But very, very good performance against Newcastle. Not to be forgotten. And in at number nine this week is Juan Mata. And look, in that system with people like Bruno and Van der Beek around him, you really get the best out of Mata when it's a, a more possession-based game. Which, you know, to be honest, with the Greenwoods and the Rashfords and, and, and the Martials, we normally play a lot faster. And that bypasses someone like Mata. The more possession-based game from United really does work. Uh, another player that's benefited this week and he's played twice and definitely deserves it. I mean, I, I could do an ABBA song. He's Swedish. You can dance. You... I don't know. I'm not really going to. Um, Victor Lindelof in at number eight this week. Uh, I wouldn't say he's the Iceman. I'm not going to call him the Iceman. I just feel an idiot when I call him the Iceman. And I think anybody who does should feel an idiot because... Lindelof hasn't been ice cold for a long time. Um, he's been melting a little bit, actually. But look, as the winter comes, maybe he'll firm up into ice again because he was absolutely fantastic against PSG in the week. And I know there was five defenders at the back, but one of them in, as a weak link would have cost us the game. So look, he wasn't up there with other defenders, but he had a very good performance against um, PSG. And Newcastle, um, I mean, against Newcastle, to be honest, he's... Let's not bl get blinkered. His Newcastle performance was okay. I thought Maguire's was okay, but he got the goal that made it better than okay. Lindelof was actually okay against Newcastle. He didn't have a lot to do. Against PSG, he had a lot to do. He was very good. So he's very very much worthy of his, uh, of his spot at number eight. Number seven. Here he is, the legend. I think it is. Is it? Is it going to work? Is it going to... Was it? I, I, I don't know. It looks like it might have frozen. That's always a pain when you're recording the video. He is here. He's number seven. He's looking right at me. No, that way. He's looking right at me. Feed the world. Let them know it's Christmas time. And feed the world. Let them know. It's probably a little bit early for Christmas, but you get what I mean. 
This man, this man's a bloody legend. A legend what he is doing in the UK at the moment. An MBE, he, with these hands, he is feeding the nation. And he is, I mean, look, what he's doing is absolutely amazing. And that's the only song I thought that had a little bit of passion to it that was about feeding people. And um, if you know a better one, get in the comments. I nearly did Heal the World by Michael Jackson, but I thought, hmm. So we went with Feed the World, and he is. He's doing a fantastic job. And if this was about what you're doing as a human being, then Marcus Rashford would have no peer. He'd be number one this week. But in a footballing sense, a very good week for Rashford. Look, I said this season was going to be a big season for him. I don't think the off-field stuff is going to detract from what he's doing on the field. He's a very focused and driven young man. And if he can do what he's doing off the field, then he can be anything he wants to be on the field as well. And I think over the last week, what I loved about his PSG performance was that it wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. I thought he was very wasteful, but he never gave up and he kept going. And that's what top players do. Um, I've, I've seen Ronaldo have games like that. And I'm not comparing him to Ronaldo, but I've seen Ronaldo miss loads of shots and they'll keep going, keep believing. The whole point of being about a high, the whole thing about being a high end professional sportsman is that you keep backing yourself. And Rashford did that on Tuesday night. A few times he ran through, he got caught up. A few times he went for the wrong ball. He tried to play Martial in, he got it wrong. But the finish he made for the winner was superb. And he had another one where Navas made a really good save. So he keeps backing himself. He keeps going. And that, to me, is the mentality that you need. And he's got a very strong mentality. And then, of course, against Newcastle, I think he got two assists and a goal himself as well. So a very good performance. We need him this weekend as well. He probably should be a little bit higher. But I just I wanted to go with a more clever view on this. One, really, that Rashford keeps going and moves higher up the charts, hopefully. And two, so we don't give him too much uh, praise. And and secondly of all, um, I don't think he actually played that well against PSG, but he got the goal. So I think a little bit of realism there. But a lot of you probably would have him a bit higher. I think there's more to come from Marcus. So he's in at number seven. This week's number six, um, look, probably not going to be very popular if I'm absolutely honest, but I've gone with uh, Luke Shaw in at number six. For the simple reason that I, I just think that he was very good against um, Newcastle. Uh, there's no doubt about that. He was good against Newcastle. Uh, but the PSG performance was... There's not many... I've watched a lot of football and there's not many people who can do that. Left-sided centre-back is basically centre-back and then left-back in a back four after 65 minutes. He wasn't asked to go to left-back with 10 minutes to go. It was 25 minutes to go. Tactical switch. Now you're going to be a full-back again. Having been superb at left-sided centre-back, I thought Luke Shaw was, was brilliant against PSG and one of the key components to his winning that game. So for me... A player that doesn't get a lot of credit and actually probably won't even be in the top 10 next week because I don't think he'll get picked against Chelsea, which is fine because, you know, Tellez will be left back and I think probably Maguire will come back in. But for this week and for that performance against PSG, you've got a very, very valuable player there that allows you to play a couple of systems and defend really well. So I thought Luke Shaw was, uh, was very good against PSG. Uh, number five this week. You come to me. Give me everything I need, yeah. You're simply the best. Do, do, do. Better than all the rest. Better than anyone. Anyone I've ever met. I'm stuck on your heart. No, I'm getting carried away with that Tina Turner classic, but simply the best this week. Axel Twans. Well, he's not the best because he's number five, obviously, but... A brilliant performance, an absolutely brilliant performance from somebody who'd been out for a year to be chucked. I didn't think he could even play. I don't think I even put, I, I think on my preview, I said, you're having a laugh. You're having a bloody laugh putting Twan Sebi in. How can you expect him to play after a year against Mbappe and Neymar and go into a game of that magnitude when he's hardly played any football, let alone first team football? I don't think he'd played hardly any under 23 football. So... What a performance. It was like he'd been playing in that position for the last five years. It, it really was like his name was, uh, um, you know, Twan, Twan Sebi, really. I mean, well, Twan Dyke. Um, but no, he was absolutely brilliant, absolutely superb. And, and to look, he didn't play against Newcastle, so he only played one game this week. But unlike Mata, who only played against Newcastle, this was at the highest level. This was away against PSG, and he, and he was on the right-hand side, remember? So that was Neymar and Mbappe. The, the times he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mbappe in a sprint and didn't lose the race and, and, and won the ball 
just a fantastic performance by Twan Sebi and uh, really, really deserves the credit. I thought he was absolutely superb. As does this person, Fred. Look, sit down, Troy Deeney. Um, look, he might, his first touch may be a weak spot, but that wasn't a weak spot again. And Fred, I felt, was unlucky to come off against Newcastle on the hour. I think McTominay should have come off. I thought Fred was playing really well, but maybe there was an eye on the Tuesday night. I don't know. But against PSG in Paris, in the Champions League, that was the complete midfield performance. The amount of times, the amount of distance he covered, but the amount of times he broke up the play, won the ball back. I want to see Fred getting more game time. I'm not saying he needs to be a starter every game, but I want to see him regularly in the team because I think what we see with Fred time and time again is he gets to this level of performance and we go what an important player he is. And we were saying this just before lockdown, to be fair. You come back from lockdown, he's out the team. You start the season, he's out the team. He needs to be involved in the team more because one thing that is very clear to all United fans about Fred is that the more times he plays, the better he gets. And in Fred, we've got something we don't have. We've got lots of players with an attacking flair like Bruno and Van der Beek and Mata. And we've got a lot of players with a defensive side of a McTominay and a Matic. But in Fred, you've got a genuine, fast, tenacious player. He's the one player that offers us something that in the modern game I think you really need. That tenacious speed across the ground to break the play up and give the ball to better players. So a massive, uh, massive uh, performance from him. I, I thought he was absolutely um, uh, superb. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely magnificent from Fred. I'm trying to think who's in at number three. And I know who it is now. Don't waste your words, I don't need anything from you. Da -na 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 -na. I don't care where you've been or what you plan to do. I am the resurrection and I am the light. I couldn't ever bring myself to hate you if I tried. I've just murdered the Stone Roses. Oh my god. I'm David. I'm so apologetic. I've just murdered the Stone Roses in 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 a high key. I can't. I, I'm I'm ashamed. I should have I should have, I should have pulled out. I should have pulled out. Um, which is what no, I'm not going to say that. But uh, yeah. Anyway, look, David De Gea, absolutely superb. He's 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 been brilliant since this season started. And the funny thing is, he let so many goals in, and none of them were his fault. And then since the international break against Newcastle, that save he made at 1-1 where he was low down was just one of the best saves I've seen this season. And then against PSG, without really making um, an out-and-out world-class save, he made a number of saves that I think other goalkeepers might have struggled with. So David De Gea, to me, at number three, exactly where he should be. I think David De Gea is one of those players who should be in the top three every week. Unless we're beating teams 4 or 5 nil, and he's got nothing to do. But, you know, with this run of games that we've got, Newcastle, PSG, Chelsea, Leipzig, Arsenal, Everton. I expect that man to be in the top five over the next few chart shows because we've got big games where he's going to have to be putting in big performances. He's going to have to make saves against those teams. So very, very happy um, with David De Gea and uh, he's doing fantastically well at the moment. Uh, number two is... There's a little bit of delay on this today and I don't know why. I'm sure it'll kick in. Do 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 You can't start a fire You can't start a fire without a spark This gun is for hire Even if we're just dancing in the dark You can't start a fire You can't start a fire without a spark This gun is for hire I love that song Bruno Fernandes in at number two. Look, the great thing about, the genius about Bruno Fernandes is I still don't think he's playing anywhere near his best. But what a week. The penalty retake against PSG, the leadership, the calmness under pressure. This man is the catalyst. This man is the fire starter. This guy is the spark that everybody else burns around. He's absolutely essential. Is he our most talented player? No, that is probably a Paul Pogba or an Anthony Martial. But neither of those two players are in the top 10 this week. Bruno Fernandes again, right near the top because he is our best player. He's not the most talented, but he's our best player because he delivers. He delivers consistently. He delivers under pressure and he drives and leads that team. 
The performance he put in, the distance he covered, the leadership he provided against Paris was the catalyst for us to be able to believe and do that result. And then against Newcastle, look, I don't think he played well against Newcastle, but what did he get? And he got an assist, he missed a penalty, he, got a, he, he scored a cracking goal, the team, our best team goal of the season against Newcastle. He was massively part of that. The finish was amazing. He didn't need to put it in the top corner, but he just did. And then the, the assist for, Mar for, for Rashford again over a massive long pass. He's just so good. And he's not even playing at his best. And he's so good. So I can't put him at number one this week as much as I would like to because I think he's deserving of it. But absolutely fantastic from Bruno Fernandes. And I'm running out of superlatives for him because he's so, so important to what we're trying to achieve. Massive performances and a massive week for Bruno. And uh, this guy's in at number one. Shoot me down, but I won't fall. I am titanium. I can't, I can't, my voice is going and I'm going too high on some of the songs. I've murdered that one now as well. But Wan Bissaka, in many ways, you could say he murdered Mbappe and Neymar on Tuesday night. He certainly murdered their ta attacking talents and put them in a pocket Put them in a body bag, really. Their attacking talents were destroyed. Um, and look, wan has had a really big week. There's a lot of stuff going off in the press in, in England around things that have been going on off the pitch. Um, and his performances over the last two games, he was fantastic against... He got his first goal for United against Newcastle, remember? Like, he was unbelievably good against PSG, but he played very, very well against Newcastle. Got his first goal... Provided the attacking width, which is his biggest critics will say it's his attacking side of his game that is the problem. But he was very good against Newcastle, defensively brilliant against Newcastle. And remember, look, actually, wan was probably the player that had the hardest week about out of anybody. Because he had to play Newcastle's best player in St. Maximum, who he absolutely kept quiet. And then on Tuesday night, he was going to be up against Neymar and Mbappe, and Mbappe, and, and he kept them quiet as well. So there can be no doubting in my mind that wan is number one this week and totally deserved it. And when I've looked at previous weeks that we've done, I don't think wan has ever been a number one, um, which is weird. This about seven weeks uh, or eight. We've done, I think this is like the ninth chart show altogether that we've done this year. And wan has been second a couple of times. Um, he's been top five nearly all the time. He's been third. He's been second again. Um, he's never been number one. So he is, and he's been third again. So this is Aaron wan first ever number one on the United Stand Chart Show. So it's a big, big, big applause. And he totally and utterly deserves it. And look, I think the big thing is we missed him. After lockdown, he disappeared for a bit. At the start of the season, he disappeared a bit. He was awful against Brighton. He was absolutely terrible. One of the worst right-back performances I've ever seen against Brighton. But Newcastle and PSG is back at his best and we just need to keep him there because at the moment, no, he is titanium. He's, nothing's going to get past him and will get anybody get past him next week. We'll see. But look, massive game to, against Chelsea to come. Smash a like on the video if you like the chart show. I know it's... it's a, the point of it's very good. It's the top 10 United players of the week. The singing about it well, even I know I got a couple wrong there. But look, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all in a bit.